morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McFoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. That was ASAP Adonai on piano. ASAP, what song was that? That is Patsy Klein's Crazy. Nice, I decided nice. to do it for our guest today. Good cool. choice. <laughs> well, speaking of our guest today, we've got friends from Blue Mountain Clinic. They're talking about their cross-country drag show happening at the Top Hat on Saturday. And we actually have some performers, too. So we're able yes. to interview them about their alto ego and what they plan on doing. Yes, and we have a lot of events coming up for today. And we'll have more of your events later on the show but of course um it's the best uh all these kind of shows all these kind of things are good because they're going to keep you inside and of course being inside is uh prevalent especially nowadays when the weather's getting colder it's getting a little more rainier you don't know when it's going to rain but tonight you have that 20 percent chance of rain and of course uh your temperatures are going to be about 43 degrees currently your high is going to be 57 your low is going to be 41 saturday um, tonight it's going to increase to about 80, 40 percent to 80 percent rain. You know, Saturday 50, 20 percent rain, and then by Sunday it's going to be partly cloudy, and then Monday we're back into the uh, the whole the snuff of it all. Yeah, it looks like it's still pretty warm though, so it's that's why it's so rainy. But there is snow in the mountains, so it's only to be soon. You know, soon enough. It'll yep. come. The snow will land on us. But there's snow everywhere else in the state. Yeah, well, it, it definitely, if it rains down here, it snow snows in the mountains for sure. Um, but, of course, if you want to find <laughs> more information, you can uh, go to uh, weather.gov. But, if, of course, if you want to find more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write all that stuff out. Um, you can like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. We also have a Facebook page. You can like us on that. And to find out more information or to watch us live, just go to MCAT.org. Yes. Hey, um, Noel, do you like uh, animation shorts? Oh my god, I love them! They're great because every Saturday, MCAT Missoula Community Access Television here in our studio, 500 North Higgins, we host a bunch of kids to come on down. To, uh, they have to be the ages between uh, 9 and 13, and from 1 to 5, we make stop animated shorts. It's really fun. It's really fun. It's only for ten dollars, and of course, mm -hmm. if you're uh, if you have kids who are you know who don't really know, you can always do a half day for five dollars. It's yep. very true. And so, also halfway through the day, we can do live action. But we always like to get them to do stop motion the first half of the day, um, just because animation is a really cool skill to know and cool skill to have. And you know, we've got resources to do it, so they should do it, yep. and we should do it. It's really fun. Yep. <laughs> and of course, you know, the election's coming up and there's a, definitely a lot to talk about. Um, I do have a video I want to show for you guys later, so I'll show that after the interview um, with uh, Blue Men Clinic when they come on our show. Uh, but before that, uh, I mean, it, it's a teen talk. It's a new segment I'm going to start doing on Fridays, and it's basically some teens talking about um, real um, life events and how they think and what their opinions are about that. Oh, that's cute, Scott! Yep. Oh, the cute little teens! Yep. But of course, we do have some new programs. Um, tonight, uh, we have um, Look Before You Speak, and they're talking with Tom Linz. He is the, I think he's kind of like the art curator for the, uh, I, I want to say, Opportunity Resource. Nice. And he helps a lot of people who go there to uh, make, um, they, they uh, work with recycled computer parts, but also they do some art as well, which is really good for them. Um, but of course, uh, we'll be right back. Um, but for, here's some, I don't know, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get build to it, but I have no idea where I'm going with this. I'm trying to like promote MCAT's um, shows. Like we have some great shows for you guys. So here's a little tease of what you guys can see um, tonight and tomorrow night on MCAT channel 189. Uh, with Sarah, for you know, uh, you're talking about uh this picture that we had up there, you know, her making pottery, three-handed yeah. pottery. Yeah. And uh, that was her start, you know, of, of uh, being able to contribute to that process. Sure, sure. And uh, th that brought a lot of joy. And then she got comfortable, and we thought that if she had the right kind of mouse, that she could do digital art. Oh. And that's where Sarah really started to get the individualized. So is she working uh, on a pot here? Yeah, that uh, vase to the right there is a uh, wheel thrown, and that's her hand in my hand doing the lip of the pot there. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, she, she used to get, you know, uh, a paycheck from the pad for doing the, the shredding that would be, you know, just a few cents, you know, and she would scream back then. Yeah. But now she gets a check sometimes up to $200. Yeah. You know, and uh, <laughs> it's still screaming for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Splashes, dig salt, change, ventures, with legs. He splashes, dig salt, change, ventures, with legs. 
big salt. James with the wind, please. Salt, James with just can in. Come on, little cheese. Come on, little cheese. And same, same tall sun. With a little thing to team. What team now? And a base. Yep. So that last uh, clip that you just saw was from the Fringe Festival, and that's happening tomorrow night at 7 p.m. It's an ongoing series that um, MCAT filmed over the summer. And if you don't know what the film Fringe Festival, too bad. Anyways, moving on, we have uh, a segment I like to call Teen Talk. And here is, well, here's Teen Talk. I'm Neil Wells and this is Teen Talks. Today on Teen Talks, we're talking about the upcoming election and clowns. So to my right, we have Liam and Ellen. And to my left, we have Jackson and Owen. So, Liam, what do you think of this election overall? Um, it's, it's just a mess. It's never been this way before an election and it's, it's hard to watch sometimes. I usually just don't. Do you feel that's the best course of action? Uh, yeah, usually. They, I don't really get anything out of watching them, so besides frustration. Owen, what, what is your general thoughts on the election? Well, I think it's very, very dull. Dull? Dull. How so? Like, you know how they polish granite? That kind of dull. Uh, mm hmm Ellen? You know, I can't relate to any of the candidates, and um, I don't really, I'm don't. i not a big fan of any of them, so it's kind of scary, and I'm kind of nervous about the whole thing, actually. And you, Jackson? <sighs> what, what to say? What to say? I mean, yeah, it's just like Liam said, it's just a mess, and I don't end up watching any of the debates because there's nothing like that we have it's, there's not a lot of things that we haven't already heard from them mm -hmm. I think so yeah just kind of like I mean like I almost said it, it's like kinda, that's kind of why it's getting dull because there's like it's like not a lot of new stuff so do you think you'll be watching tonight's election Jackson no no probably not not even for an entertainment va uh, value no, I have better things to do for entertainment. Owen? I'd rather jab my eyes out rusty forks. Liam? Mm, maybe now that you brought it up, but again, just entertainment value. Ellen, do you think that uh, the debates this time around have any chances of uh, switching uh, parties uh, the candidates favor among the voters? Um, probably. So will you be watching tonight's? No. All right. So if, I, I know none of you can vote, but if you could vote, who would you vote for? Start with you, Liam. I mean, the only person that is gonna stop Trump from getting elected is Clinton, so I go with that. Ellen? Oh, definitely Clinton. I'm terrified of Trump. Jackson? I don't really like either candidate specifically, but Hillary is definitely better than Trump. So Hillary. And you, Owen. I vote for a meteor to destroy the Earth. Hmm. So, moving on to our next subject, the clowns. How do you feel about the clowns that have recently come about in the news, Jackson? I was honestly 
frightened to go to school on Friday, whatever, was it the... It was the 7th. Was the 7th. Yeah, thank you, Ellen. Because they, they had posted that, that Facebook post saying that they were going to come to some schools, but thankfully nothing happened. And it, I realized that they were probably just trying to scare people, but it, it did work. It did work on me. I actually know who it was. Really? Not the name of the person, but I know what it was, like who it was and where the person comes from. I heard there was like a 15-year-old kid at uh, dressed as a clown or something around 15 at Washington School that some kid saw and he got arrested. Did you guys hear about that? No. No. I heard a little bit about that. So, what do you think about the whole clown situation uh, around America, the clown hysteria as it's been called? Ellen. Well, I think the clowns are sick people. Elaborate? Yeah, um, why? Like, uh, what, what's sick about clowns? Well, I think the fact that they terrorize people while dressed up like clowns. Mm. I don't think there's, there's no reason for it. Would you say, uh, being a clown wouldn't be a very smart Halloween costume this year, Liam? I would oh. not. Don't, don't do yeah, it. Don't yeah, do so. it. No, no, that would not be a good idea. Not unless you want to get arrested. All right, so we're going to start wrapping things up here. So final thoughts about clowns or the election? Um, don't vote for Trump. He's an evil Cheeto. Go yeah, on, you're that, right. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, Trump is the, the clowns. I still am uncertain, like... I know that they have actually like kidnapped people, but nothing happened with their threats. So on uh, Missoula, so I don't know how much of it is real or not. Cause I I don't know. Nothing happened on the seventh. So Neil, my final thought about Trump is how much do you think he pays for his spray tans? Good question. But I think I'm supposed to be asking questions. Do you have uh, an idea? My bad. I don't know. Probably a thousand. All right. Yeah, I'm Neil more. Wells, and this has been Teen Talks. I didn't even get a final thought. Hey, we're here with a whole bunch of folks, and they're here to talk about a cross-country um, Drake show that's happening this Saturday at the Top Hat. So please, um, tell us more. I'm going to let Isaac Okay, yeah, that. I'll talk about the Drake show. It's going to be... Um, it's about 16 performers in front of a live country band that we've assembled from some of Missoula's best um, kind of country players around here. Some members of um, Gashford Junkers, okay. Gibson Hartwell, who's a great pedal steel player. And um, they're going to be backing up 16 local performers who are all going to be on stage in drag singing um, country songs that they've chosen by the opposite gender. So, for example, we have um, Julie Tompkins. Uh, singing a song by Charlie Rich, and she's going to be dressed up as a man, singing. Oh, yeah. That's fun. Behind closed doors. And then, so who is this benefiting? Who's putting this on? Uh, the Blue Mountain Tank. Yeah. Trinda specifically. Yeah. 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 Trinda's college. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> so Isaac approached uh, Annie Hansen, who's our executive director, mm -hmm. in April, I think, and uh, he wrote Annie this email, and he was like. I have this great idea, what do you guys think? And Annie and I were all over. We were like, this is gonna be the coolest event, we're super excited, and so the, it kind of went from there, and, and Isaac has been, Isaac and Don have been the driving force behind it, and nice. we have, you know, we pushed a little bit on our website, and um, yeah, we're fired up, it's gonna be really fun. We're, we're psyched to be a part of something that is super unique, and um, so yeah. And so how much does it cost? Uh, it's going to be fifteen dollars. Okay. There's pre-sales right now at um, the top hat tophatlounge.com, but you can also get tickets at the door day of the show, and it'll be fifteen dollars at the door as well. Oh, that's sweet. And then, so you guys are performing. Yeah. So who yeah. are your alter egos, and what songs are you guys performing? Don. Um, I'm performing a Conway Twitty song. Uh -huh. It's called uh, "It's Only Make Believe." Yeah. And I'm going to do a Conway style. It was hard to decide if you were just going to do 
whatever your country drag persona style was or the persona specific to your song, but Ooh. it felt easier to just kind of adopt somebody's established style for now. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, then Isaac, how about you? Uh, I'm gonna be, or I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna do uh, a, Reba, <laughs> a Reba McIntyre song. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's still pretty current, too. Is she? Oh, yeah. She's still a current. Oh, no, yeah, she totally is. She's totally is. I don't think it's so she's a It's, it's I super syndicated. Right, it's on oh, really? like, regular television. Yeah. The like, one season. Like Golden yeah. Girls and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was called Reba. So, uh, <laughs> what came about this uh, um, idea for the. Um, for the uh, for the drag show, it was just um, it was just an idea that I had um, to perform as Reba McIntyre yeah, on that, stage, that and was... uh, <laughs> and I thought it'd be fun. I knew of uh, a couple of the shows where they have bands and they have people get up on stage and sing um, country songs, but none where the the genders were reversed or um, there was a drag element. And uh, I thought of Blue Mountain Clinic as a great kind of um, <laughs> beneficiary for a cool, like, um, kind of gender bending. Nice. So you wanted to be Reba, and was like, I better have someone to back me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the. I get that. Sad to it. Are there great. like I've I've been to a few drag shows um, around Missoula. Is there any lip syncing at all? Oh no, yeah, that's so. Th no, there's gonna be. <laughs> these are all. The, everybody on stage is. Um, a singer. Singing? Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I didn't understand that. Yeah, okay. and the band is, you know, completely live. So they've been, we've been rehearsing for the last couple weeks, and um, so far it sounds great. Nice. Yeah. So uh, for, for when you're rehearsing the song, do you guys have to have your own voice for it? Because, you know, you're singing a Reba song. Do you sing as Reba? Well, like, I, I'm i singing, everybody can kind of choose their own key, which I'm singing in the same key but an octave lower. So, uh yeah, it was kind of whatever, wherever anybody could fit in, and the band's good enough they can kind of switch around, and That's they've nice. been really accommodating with that. So, but I'm going to try to inhabit Reba's, you know, yeah, stage change. presence exactly. as much exactly. as possible. <laughs> yeah. But, and so, where can people find out information about you guys in this event? Um, the the TopHatLounge.com has uh, ticket um, sales and some more information. We have a Facebook um, page. Um, there's can, an article in today's Missoulian. Yep, in the mm -hmm. Entertainer, um, and then you could probably go to Blue Mountains page. Yeah, we got we a little have information a, about yep. the show. So, I sh yeah. <laughs> it's on there. It's, it's on there for quite some time. So. Um, Great. It's gonna be really fun. I, it's certainly yeah. there. I don't think there's anything. I mean, I don't think there's anything like it anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it's cool to have something so unique and kind of very open. In Missoula. And so will it be seated? You'll be have seats? I hope not. No, it'll be, <laughs> okay, it'll be like, it'll be a, crazy. Mm -hmm. like a concert. Yeah, oh, and okay. uh, the attendees, everybody, anybody mm. who comes is encouraged to dress and drag as oh, well. That'll be fun. To whatever extent they're comfortable, and they don't have to, but it, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. And so so uh, before we go, Sweet. one last question. Um, what For the people watching, what does Blue Mountain Clinic do for the community? So <clears throat> Blue Mountain Clinic is a full service, or full service, it's a... Um, we're a primary care practice, and we specialize in all sorts of, um, we, we have trans care, reproductive health, abortion care. Um, we treat men, women, children, everyone in between. We've been, we're a nonprofit. We're not, we don't take any government funding. Um, so we are, we truly are a community supported health center. Um, and we've been here since 1977. Next year is actually our 40th anniversary. Uh, yeah, cool. so we're pretty excited about that. and. Uh, so yeah, we we literally are here because of the community, and and we're very appreciative of that, and we hope everyone comes out and supports us on Saturday. So awesome! Okay, yeah. say one more time, when and where? Uh, the top hat Saturday, tomorrow, the twenty second. Mm -hmm. um, doors are at nine. The show price starts around uh, nine thirty or ten. Mm -hmm. Nice. Fifteen dollars. Great. Uh, T-shirts available. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are sweet. Yeah. Uh huh. Artist uh, art, art by Foster Caffrey. Oh. <laughs> and they're short sleeves. Yeah, 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 this is kind of false advertising. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cute. I'll come for the shirt. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, you guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. us. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Kate. Are you new to Missoula County or curious if you're election ready? Well, you're in luck. My voter page is the Secretary of State's voter access portal where you can find anything and everything you need to know about your election status. 
To get there, visit myvoterpagemt.com. My Voter Page will inform you if your information is current with our office. Double check your residential status, your mailing address, and more. This will save you from any issues on election day. You will know if you're an absentee voter by seeing important notice at the top of the screen. You can even track the status of your absentee ballot through the mailing and voting process. If you do not identify as an absentee voter, you will see information on the location of your polling place, directions, and other important information for election day. Be sure to check out my voter page well before November 8th to make sure you're election ready. I've got some community events for your Friday. So, TGIF, happy Friday, everyone. Up first, we have got, starting at 9 a.m., as there is no school for kids today, there's play in a day with MCT. So, camp begins at 9. They come up, have a play, they rehearse it all day, other performances, and start at 5.30. And then the camp ends at 6. All day. Over at Mismo Gymnastics is family fun time. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Okay, I'm back. Over at Mismo Gymnastics is family fun time starting at 9.30. Um, this is an open gym for ages walking to 12 years. They have supervised foam and supervised, you know, activities with foam pits, obstacle courses, trampolines, those poles you can swing on. Over at Green Ribbon Books, they've got a fundraising book sale to benefit Tell Us Something that starts at 10 a.m. And then at 10.30, over at the Public Library's Family Story Time. This is uh, three days a week and includes songs and an act art activity. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Tiny Tales is at the Public Library. It's at 10.30. This is for a younger crowd. It's a baby, baby's birth through three years. And then they sing songs. They learn finger plays, hear nursery rhymes, and stories as well. Preschool Playgroup is at Ruth Zachary Sports Center. This is an open gym for ages walking to five years. They set up different activities and stations around the gym, and parents and children get to choose and rotate what they want to do. At the Children's Museum of Missoula at 11, they have leaf color pressing. Then at noon at the library, there's yarns. And then at the water, at a, also at the library, also at noon, is the watercolor painting class. Uh, this is for those open ages 18 and up, and from 12 to 2. And then at the university at 3 o'clock is a President Lecture Series Seminar as featuring Rowan O'Donnell, who is a Senior Lecturer, Department of History, and University of Limerick. He's speaking on researching Irish Republican Army prisoners in England from 1868 to 1998. That sounds pretty interesting. So it's free and open to the public. And then at Karis Park is the ninth annual Pray for Snow party um, that starts at 5.30. This is put on by the West Central Missoula Avalanche Forecasters and the Missoula Avalanche Foundation. Mm -hmm. Pray for it snow. Mm -hmm. Pray for it snow. Tom Catmull is playing at the Missoula Brewing Company at 6 o'clock tonight. Also at 6 is the Haunted Hollow, a carousel for Missoula. So over at the carousel, they're going to make it spooky for the little ones, and that starts at 6 o'clock. And then at Top Hat Lounge, they have their Family Friendly Friday, and they're featuring the Loose String Band. That's going to be at 6 until 8. Also at 6 at the Union Club in the Irish Music Session. And then Travis Yost plays the Ten Spoon Vineyard and Winery, also at 6. And then uh, at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, once again at 6 o'clock, is an introduction to modern board games. Um, and so if it's you're getting a little bored with the same old board games, you guys can get introduced to new modern games. So I think that they're going to be playing, let's see, Settlers of Catan, Ticket to Ride, and uh, Kakasa's another one I can't pronounce. Um, <laughs> that's going to be at 6, and it's only $24 from 6 to 8. Is it Canasta? Um, no. Carcassone? Carcassone? Carcassonne! I don't know, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Over at Green Path Herb School, they've got a plant identification intro. It starts at 6 o'clock. Um, you'll play games and learn plant identification so you can eat them and use them as herbs. And then at the Wilmot, the Little Smokies are playing. That starts at 7 o'clock. They're playing with the last Revel. Or Revel? No. Yeah, at the Wilmot. And then Eric Tolferson is going to be at the Badlander at 7 o'clock. 
Also at 7 at the Public Library is Cheap Date Night. It's where they play a classic film in their large meeting room. And then at the Missoula County Fairgrounds, the Missoula Haunted House is here. So that starts at 7 o'clock, and I know Scott was talking about going to it. Yes. Are you going to? Yes, I am. I'm going to eventually go to it if, I, uh, if I'm not too busy this weekend, because I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff this weekend, which include uh, play rehearsal, mm -hmm. uh, Pinky in the Floor this weekend on Saturday night, mm -hmm. and then of course uh, I'm going to Dracula, which mm -hmm. brings you to your next... It's true, yes. Thanks for the intro, Scott, even though I wanted to ask you more questions. Okay, <laughs> so Dracula is at 7.30 at the University of Montana this evening, and it happens all weekend long. I heard it was amazing. I'm sure it is amazing. They had really cool bats. They had like a cool like light pattern of bats on the building last night, the Part TV Center, and I thought it looked really neat. So you guys look for that at night. Um, and then at the University of Montana is a President's Lecture Series Lecture. So it'll be with the same guy, Ruan O'Donnell, and he'll be speaking on Irish America and the 1916 Rising at the University of Montana. And then Monks, uh, the Helio sequence is playing at 9. Joan Zen is at the Uni Club at 9.30. The Renegades is at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. Dead Larry is at the Top Hat Lounge at 10. At the Badlander, it's Foxy Friday Funk Down featuring the Funk Hunters. Mm -hmm. And that's also at 10 o'clock. That's what's going on in your community for your Friday night. As always, you guys can check out MissoulaEvents.net. But we're switching gears and going to Musical Notes with ASAP Outer Net. Well, before I start, and this might interest you, Noel, perhaps both of you, according to a poll on CBS, what's the number one reason people don't go to work? How come? Laziness. Well, they, those were some of it, but the number one, <laughs> the number one reason is getting hit by a duck. <laughs> I guess that excuse is not what it's quacked up to be. Oh. <laughs> nice. That so. joke comes from Carlene Prince, YNOP Radio. So nice. <laughs> Thought I'd share that. That's a pretty good excuse. I'll use that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Carlene will be proud of that. <laughs> All right, there's an old saying, never judge a book by its cover. You never know what kind of gems and treasures are in a person's heart or what kind of friend you may have. Our guest on today's Musical Notes can be such a friend with a heart of gold. She won the lead role in 2006 in which she plays a girl whom her peers find extremely unattractive, intended to downplay her looks in contrast to most of the glamoured up characters that she plays. Our guest invented the term bettification to describe the process of creating her on-screen persona. And she won the 2007 Golden Globe Award for Best Actress, Television Series, Musical or Comedy. And as a result of this award, she was congratulated by the U.S. House of Representatives as being a role model for young Hispanics. We're talking about America, Georgine Ferreira, beautiful both on the inside and out. Known to the world as Ugly Betty, the lovely America Ferreira, and there she is on the screen. <laughs> and uh, what a contrast between this character, Ugly Betty, and who this young woman is in real life. America Ferreira is an American actress, best known, as I stated, for her leading role, Betty Suarez in the ABC comedy drama television series Ugly Betty, and she also stars as Amy on the NBC sitcom Superstore. So that's pretty cool. She, she was born six children in Los Angeles. Her parents are from Honduras, and they immigrated to the United States in the 1970s. She did her first play as a third grader, Romeo and Juliet, and then in Los Angeles, she did some community theater throughout her youth. In 2002, she appeared in her first television movie called Gotta Kick It Up for the Disney Channel. And she made her debut in Real Women Have Curves. And this was followed up with Rose on Touched by an Angel with Roma Downey. And that was a pretty cool show. In 2006, she appeared in a short film, which was 3.52, 3 minutes, 52 seconds, which won the Audience Award at the San Diego Women Film Festival. And she also, in 2005, appeared in an off-Broadway play, Dog Sees God, Confessions of a Teenage Blockhead. <laughs> wow. And of course, she's done a lot more stuff than that. I'm just condensing it down here. 
In 2007, she won the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female in a Comedy Series. Also that same year, Time, Time Magazine chose her as one of the top artists and entertainers in their top 100, the most influential people in the world issue. Isn't that something? And that same year, she also won the Imagine Foundation's Creative Achievement Award. She also won a Primetime Emmy Award for, you know, Outstanding Lead Actress for that Ugly Betty series. And finally, she made her London debut in 2011 playing Roxy Hart in a musical of Chicago in London's West End. And of course, your audience can look up more accomplishments by this young woman here. This was just a flyover condensed version, but she'll always be remembered and known to the world as Ugly Betty, even though we know in real life she is a beautiful, lovely young woman. And I will stop on that note. Huh? Please, thank you very much, Asa. Sure. America Ferreira has always been one of my favorite uh, actresses as well. Yeah. I mean, she's great. All right, so we have an art clip for you guys, and I'm just going to bring it up, and it is a brand new art clip from ver our very own Rick Phillips, and I believe it's at the uh, Mizzou Art Museum, and it's uh, William uh, Vickers. Volkers? Yeah. Volkers. Volker oh, it's probably like the Z is silent, so Volkers? Yep. Yep, William yeah. Volkers, um, colon, on paper. So without further ado, here is the new art clip, and we'll have your Saturday and weekend events with Noah after this. <laughs> We're back and we have weekend events for you. So up first we've got some, a list of Saturday events. We have our farmers market, so it's going to be at the Red Exits from 8 to 1. And then the People's Market, which is on Pine Street outside of the Thomas Mar Bar, as well as Jimmy John's, that'll be from 9 to 2. And then the Clark Fork Market down at Cares Park, also from 8 to 1. Um, over the Roots Acro Sports Center, they've got their trampoline jam that starts at 10 a.m. This is for ages 5 to 12 years. It's a structured dropping class that focuses on front and back flip progressions. And then at the University of Montana, they've got PEO Treasures and Craft Market that starts at 10 a.m. until 4 o'clock. Uh, PEO is a philanthropy philanthropic, yeah, nonprofit women's organization, which is a 150-year-old sisterhood. So all funds go towards educational scholarships, grants, awards, and loans. Over at Green Path Herb School, they are going to do more plant identifications. They're going to be talking about patterns. I guess there is a certain pattern to identifying plants. And so today and tomorrow on Sunday, they'll be going through that. Uh, and that starts at 10 a.m. At Cabela's, starting at 11, uh, the first 25 kids can carve pumpkins for free. This is for children 14 and younger. And then at the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium, they're going to be talking about venomous hunters that starts at noon and goes until 2 o'clock. And then at DraftWorks, is their customer appreciation celebration that starts at noon. They're going to have free barbecue, free music, um, free root beer floats, free paste painting, but not free beer. And so that starts at noon. 
And then at McCormick Park, they've got their Fall Families Fest that starts at 1 o'clock. Uh, they'll have a good old-fashioned outdoor fun. So it'll be, let's see, it'll be music by the salamanders. There'll be hay rides, cider pressing, sack races, wildlife viewing, rock climbing, food games, and a giant leaf pile, as well as some sawdust wood carving, um, and there'll be a contest out of that. So that's going to start at 1, and if you guys want to participate in the sawdust wood carving contest, you can pick up your 12-foot cottonwood log from Kearns Aquatic Center um, today uh, from 9 to 5. At the Zoo Tenerts Community Center, Saturday, uh, starting at 2 o'clock until 4, they have a lantern making. So, uh, they're going to be celebrating the Missoula's Festival of the Dead by carrying lanterns through downtown to show uh, how giving lets your legacy shine on. So, they're going to be doing that. It's a free workshop. You guys can just drop in and make your own lantern. At the Montana Natural History Center, they're going to be talking about creatures of the night. That starts at 2 o'clock. And then at MCT Center for the Performing Arts, they've got a uh, they've got a play. It's going to be Tarzan, the stage musical. That's going to start at two o'clock. Based on the music from Phil Collins. Oh, nice! That's going to be fun. And then at Karis Park, they've got a locals pro sale at Shredfest. Shredfest is happening tomorrow. So today is a pray for snow party, and then Shredfest is happening tomorrow. Um, but starting at two o'clock, they have got a comp lumberjack competition, and you can also go buy and sell some, uh, some snowboard and skiing gear. And then at the Top Hat Lounge is the Missoula Boutique's Fall Fashion Collective Sale. So it's at 3 o'clock. So from 3 to 4, you can pay some extra money. And what it is is all these different boutiques from town set up a pop-up shop in the Top Hat Lounge. You can get drinks and some appetizers. And then you can walk around and shop. But if you want to do the 3 for 4, that's a VIP. And I think you have to pay like 20 or $30. And then at 4 o'clock is where it's open to everyone. So that's going to be pretty cool. So you'll, if you do VIP, you'll receive a free bag, a drink token, and a mystery gift. Oh my gosh. And then at 4 o'clock at Karis Park is the 6th annual uh, Treasure State Shred Fest. So people are going to ski and snowboard down a mountain of fake snow. Or no, it'll be real snow that they just dump in there. And then we've got music at Imagination Brewing Company. There will be a live music with Spinal Pizza that starts at 6 o'clock. <laughs> so and <gross>. then <laughs> at Missoula Brewing Company, there's Wolf in the Moons that also starts at 6. The Loose String Band will be playing Draftworks at 6 o'clock. Andre Floyd will be playing the Tens Food at Vineyard Winery also at 6. The Missoula Haunted House is at the Missoula County Fairgrounds at 7 o'clock. Pinky and the Floyd, three different ones, will be at the Wilma Theater at 7, which I know Scott is going to, mm -hmm. so hopefully we'll hear all about that on uh, Monday. <laughs> yeah, right. <sighs> He's so negative. I'm sorry, you guys. Salsa 406 will be at the Dark Horse Bar at 8.30, absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander at 9. And then uh, Cross Country at the Top Hat Lounge starting at 9 o'clock or around 10. Uh, the Renegades will be at the Star Night Saloon at 9.30. And the Money Panty will be at the Union Club also at 9.30. And I've got some Sunday events for you guys. So on Sunday, starting at 8 a.m., is Ula and Ula Power at Ballet Arts. Um, and so it'll be a conditioning class. So Ula Power is 8 a.m. to 8.45, a conditioning class. And then Ula is just going to, you know, you dance. Yeah, you just dance. Yeah, you. Um, and then there's a spooky skate at Glacier Ice Rink starting at noon. And then over the flat, which is the UM flat, they're a sustainability group <laughs> cult um, <laughs> off of, just off of the university. They'll be hosting its annual harvest pie uh, party and pie contest. Seasonal soups, fresh squeezed apple cider, and a raffle. But you have to bring your own pie if you want to enter the competition. And then Tarzan will be playing at MCT starting at 2 o'clock and at 6.30. Hocus Pocus is going to be at the Roxy Theater at 2.30. And then uh, at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center, in their meeting room, they've got a conservation and ecotourism lecture um, about, in Viet about in Vietnam. So it starts at 5 o'clock, um, and it's free, and it's in their meeting room. You guys can just show up. At Imagination Brewing Company, they've got Jazz on the River from 5 to 8. And then the Roxy has a mindful movie called The Golden Kingdom. And then Dracula plays at the University of Montana at 7.30. And then also at the University of Montana at 8 is uh, Jad Abermurad from Radio Lab. And so he is a pretty established and well-known guy on the radio. And so he's going to be giving a lecture about the modern way that radio is turning to and more about storytelling and how you can make radio your dream. I believe that one is a little expensive. I think it's like 30 something dollars. Ah. 
But that's what's going on in your uh, community. You guys can check out MissoulaEvents.net. That's usually where I get all of my info from. Other than that, you can check out uh, the University of Montana website, The Independent or The Missoulian, for more events. Cool. So um, the election is coming up, and I have already shown an election video before, but I want to show you one, another one again because it's really gearing up, and this is basically um, what you need to know before you vote, for sure. Just like the, this is not who to vote for. This is about what you need to know to vote. So without further ado, here's Missoula Votes. Hi, I'm Kate. What are you doing Tuesday, November 1st? Did you know that you can vote early in the state of Montana? That's right. Come to the University Center Atrium between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Tuesday, November 1st to update your personal information, receive a ballot, and even cast your vote. This event is open to all eligible voters in Missoula County, not just students. If you're an absentee voter, you can also return your ballot to the elections office at the event that day. Have you changed your last name, moved, or had any other changes to your personal information? If so, you'll need to update this information with the elections office in order to be eligible to vote in the 2016 general election. This event will help you skip the long wait times we anticipate on Tuesday, November 8th. Also be sure to log on to my voter page at myvoterpagemt.com to check your voter registration status. If it says you're an inactive voter or have outdated information, stop by and update that information during the event. Make sure you're election ready and come hang out with us on November 1st. Hey, welcome back to Wake Up Missoula. We're talking about some city council. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go, go. Uh, I don't want you to be like, I, I don't want you like, after you're watching this, I don't want you to be like, um, it was like, I'm really informed. I want you to just go like, huh, I didn't know that. That's exactly what I want you to take away from this. Um, but uh, I went to the, uh, I did the Missoula County Health Board the other day, and one of the big things they were talking about was uh, having a program that uh, helps um, everybody be more educated when it comes to suicide prevention. And I think this is good. I don't know what it exactly call it. It's like QVP, but it's like the CPR of um, suicide prevention. I think it's like question, persuade, react. What is it? QPR, QBR, yeah, QPR. QPR. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they, they were talking about that. And uh, of course, one of the uh, people who were spearheading it was Heidi Kendall. And she talked more about that. And they gave out flyers and stuff like that. And I think it's really interesting for sure. Rather than, you know, call a hotline, it's always good to have someone know because it seems as though that um, suicide prevention um, education is more prevalent than like CPR because it's like they want to treat it just as much as it, they would with CPR. But that's just a little side note I want to talk about. But of course, in Public Works, uh, they talked about the speed limit change in the Missoula and surrounding areas, which uh, the state rose to about, uh, I mean, on I-90 throughout the state is not 80 miles per hour. Uh, but keeping areas near urban areas about 75 miles per hour and of course Reserve Street they want to keep it 65 miles per hour so they're still talking to the um, state of Montana because they're trying to they rose it and then of course um, Missoula is working with uh, Missoula I mean Montana Department of Transportation to make sure it's kind of low in just the Missoula area but of course if you've guys driven through eastern Montana you know that there's a huge slowdown in a couple um, towns nearby but of course you know 45 and 55 is still somewhat dangerous for people who are crossing the street off the highway. But of course, um, moving on, uh, parks and conservation was a big deal because they're talking about an open space. Um, they're, they're, uh, the public, they want to set a public hearing for a resolution that authorizes an expenditure of 75000 of the city's portion of the 2006 open space bond. So the 2006 open space bond, if you don't know, is basically to have Missoula purchase open space in a bond. So they passed that bond in about 10 years ago, and this is one of the things that they want to help um, procure is this area. So, so they can maybe use it for future rezoning, parks, and stuff like that. But of course, here is uh, Marilyn Marler, who, who supports this. Since, since the 2006 bond, or even more recent than that, we've participated as a partner in a lot of acquisitions that are technically outside the city limits. Um, a, a lot of them, actually, and although the, some of them might be in the city limits in the near future, and that's why they're part of our planning area, some of them you can see from the downtown, and so that's why they're considered to be important. Um, uh, and I, so I feel like everything we're doing is great and important and in line with the plan. Um, if we shift gears to have a different kind of policy discussion, 
I would say it's not about this bond or what we're doing now. It's about how are we going to put pressure on the county to participate to the level that we participate. So I think we're doing the right thing in demonstrating good forward-thinking behavior. And I am honestly not sure, because I haven't talked to any of the commissioners about it lately, how they feel about doing another county bond and like getting on the stick more in the county. All right, so of course, um, um, just a little more background on that. Uh, the county and the city kind of worked together the last time for the Fort Missoula Regional Park, and they want to um, they want to do a lot more open space bonds. So it's kind of like the city slowly annex annexing more of the county stuff. Of course, the county does expand 60 miles uh, east of Mon uh, east of Missoula to like Cedar Lake. That's how I mean, like, Missoula County is a large county, and the city of Missoula is definitely trying to buy some open space areas that the county is not really using for anything uh, that um, it's not like con for conservation re reasons or whatever. So that's just a little background on that. Um, we have um, um, Emily Bentley and she's concerned about another bond being proposed. I don't think taxpayers should have to, to pay for something that, that can be regulated. So that's just my political value and um, I you know intend to keep pushing it. Um, it's, it's my money that's being used to preserve this space that only one farmer can use, and I understand that there's a value in terms of climate change and my food security, but um, I think there's better ways we can do it. Truly. Yep, so she's, now she's not technically for the bond, but of course she's going to vote for the public hearing, because this is basically just like the preliminary <laughs> stuff they're trying to build to a certain point. Um, this next quote is from Heidi West, who, who wants to protect the lands above anything else these areas because I, I feel like we're playing a long game, a long game that goes out generations um, and users are super hard on our environmental assets and, you know, protecting these riparian areas and having agricultural lands um, are going to be valuable, you know, for generations down the road. So, yeah, so, um, yeah she's just thinking about the future. Um, the next quote we have is actually from Elizabeth Erickson, who actually was the, pers the, the people who gave the presentation for this um, $75,000 open bond stuff. And this is what she had to say in response. Every conservation easement, we take on a minimum of $10,000 to $15,000 um, that just goes to our stewardship and legal defense fund. So, and that's kind of the idea there is that it's a, um, that it becomes a self-perpetuating fund that's always there only for the stewardship of those easements. So if, even if Five Valleys um, had to let all of its staff go, there would be money there to have a, a contractor or somebody um, or one staff member go out and continue to monitor all of our easements. So there's, there's money that's only to be used for that in the future as well. So basically what, oh, basically kind of what the background behind that is they were trying to explain that even if their, or, their organizations, because um, they are technically uh, run through, uh, I don't know exactly, it's like, it's, it's like a nonprofit group that actually runs the open space bonds and kind of stuff. And one of the things they do is it's a stewardship type deal. So a lot of times what they, uh, what they do with the lands is they put into a stewardship thing. So if their um, organization failed, it's like, you know, when you have a landowner mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, you know, the person dies, okay, the government has to re reassess the assets or stuff like that. So one of the things that this organization does is uh, they're like a holding assets. So if, they're, if, they, um, if they, defun they defunct or default or anything like that, they have a stewardship in place so that anybody who wants to take over the responsibilities of dealing with open space and that kind of land, um, they can. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. encouraged. It's like, it's like it's money. It's like basically money for specifically for finding land for people. Nice. That's cool. So rather than like it, it, it basically self perpetuating. Yeah. I mean, they need. They, there's always a need for people to help procure, you know, conservation and kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and public lands is very important, especially in Montana as well. East and mostly Western Montana. Western Montana has more public lands than uh, Eastern Montana. Yeah, Eastern Montana has got a bunch of ranching communities and ranchers. So they all own those prairies. But yeah. Well, it's our trees over here. <laughs> but of course, uh, November 16th, of mm -hmm. course, the, uh, the, uh, it passed for public hearing. The public hearing is going to be held on November 16th. Um, and there will be uh, during Parks and Conservation. It will be, cool. be another meeting about Parks and Conservation, so it won't be on the consent agenda. You'll be able to say your two cents about this $75,000 um, bond where money is going to 
uh, procure more land. And this is what the bond was for 2006 to get more land for this open space bond. Um, but of course, if you want for more information, you can log on to the website, ci.missoula.mt.us. And that basically concludes your city council report. And I do have Flagship Friday Yay. video of the week, and we do have plenty of time to watch it and have a nice exit for our morning show, Wake Up Missoula. But of course, this is uh, Flagship Friday, bad words. Dude, look how many banks there are across the river. Like, who needs that many banks? Missoula has too many banks. It's like freaking every. It's like person. Seattle Starbucks is, you know? Like, Starbucks, Starbucks, Starbucks. You know what else Missoula has? What? Shirtless guys on those banks. Oh, man! They do. They do. Yeah. There's literally one right there. Can you do a for me? You know what? I'm bored of looking that direction. Let's look this way. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, God. there's a freaking sun right there. Whoa, really? That's more beautiful than this. Like, did you know that if you stare directly at the sun, you'll get superpowers? Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> you jerk. Just because I'm a freshman, you don't have to make fun of me for what I believe in. I mean, like, I'm a freshman. I'm a dude, man. Yeah, hashtag freshman lives matter. Unless they're my cousins. Hashtag you stuff. You should be lucky we're taking you under our <laughs> wing. Under my metaphorical arm wing. <laughs> You didn't put on deodorant, did you? No, I didn't. I can't see. He's dying. Guys, I can't see. Do I have superpowers? I think I do. Is that Liam? Such a douche. Uh, excuse me. Nothing. My senses are tingling. What do they tell you? What do they tell you? They tell me that there's a douche around with a one hoverboard thing. It's this way. It's the other way. This way? Hey! Quit saying douche! Douche. Don't worry, guys. I got it. You're not supposed to chase him, freshy scrub. Perfect. You guys are just jealous of the board. Huh, I was just giving in to pure pressure. Guacamole. Oh, well, the shirt's off now. Big deal. I was thinking about getting some food. What do you guys want? Not Chipotle, Owen. I'm gonna say Taco Bell. I like whatever you guys like. I uh, yeah, honestly don't really care. Nobody invited you. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. I'm gonna freak if you do. Dude. You know what? Holy. I just heard your entire conversation, and you know what? As a woman, that offends me. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. Sorry, not sorry. Hashtag. Aren't you guys being like a little bit too hard on her? No. That's what she said. Uh, well, I guess you're right. Well, I'm not exactly part of this whole jerk Whoa. group. Well, well, guess what? Not stopping it is just as bad as doing it yourself. Whoa! Well, I'm just following orders. Well, that's not right either. I was attacked by a girl when I was a kid. I didn't know what gorillas were like, but that made me think I don't belong to anyone. But these guys accept me as my first year of high school. That it. I'm gonna do my best to fit in. Quit 
What's your grandstanding? No. When I was a little kid, no, I first heard that word. I didn't understand what it meant back then, but now I, I know what it means. And uh, people use it to offend people. It's not an offensive word. Back then it wasn't supposed to be at all. And uh, it's upsetting people. It upsets me. So you know what? Just choose your words correctly, Jesus. The thing is, you just don't know how ignorant I am. How I always frolic in, in some type of wonderland somewhere. And it's just hard for me. I use humor to hide the fact I want to jump off a bridge. That was a Facebook post. Hashtag blessed. Dude, that was so touching. Yeah. That music was nice. That was my favorite part. But that, those kids, those high schoolers are really, really funny. They're funny teens. Yeah, they're, they're ridiculously crazy. And we're yeah. about running we out sure of time. Are. Let's, we sure We still have plenty of time to do some social networking. So, so. Scott, did you choose our photo for our um, website? Because yes, you guys I take did. a look at that. Look at this Look at wonderful photo of me trying to uh, butt in on Noelle's events. That's great. I love that. Oh. I'm glad that you did that. <laughs> but of course, this is, you can find this photo and more on our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write all that crap out. Uh, you can like <laughs> us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. We also has, have a Facebook page. You can like us on there. But to find out more information or watch us live online, MCAT.org is the place. Yes. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Yes, um, we thank had a great you. show. Uh, Blue Mountain Clinics, a cross country uh, drag show. Uh, live night. music, yep. live country, all like good old fashioned Conway Twitty, uh, Reba McIntyre. Hopefully, some Dolly Parton. That's a classic. He's got to be in there. So, that's at the Top Out Lounge tomorrow night at uh, starting at 9. Yep. So, yeah, doors, doors open, open at, at 8. Doors open at 9. Starts at about yes. 9, 30, or 10. It's about $15, and it goes back to the Blue Mountain Clinic, which is, as Trinda told us, is completely funded by the community. Yes. Yeah. So and thanks for And they'll be celebrating the 40 today. years. Yes, that's awesome. And it's awesome. good that they're doing more, a lot more events, and uh, you always got to support a lot of your local community-run yep. organizations. I agree. Solely because they're local. Yes, I agree. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, you guys, and I hope you all have a great weekend. For Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's ASAP 509 Piano, and we'll See you guys all on one on Monday. <laughs>